in class we had the example of a person being lifted up and this is going to be an example of a person uh, being let down through an elevator so part a the person is at rest i'll use a box to represent the person so uh, anything at rest uh, has the forces being balanced so there's a force of gravity always uh, downwards and that's going to be balanced off by the normal force the floor of the elevator is pushing up on this person. We call that a normal force. Uh, they're going to be equal in magnitude. So um, to find normal force, all you have to do is find the force of gravity. Uh, they have the same magnitude. The formula for the force of gravity is mg. So I'll fill in 50 kilograms, 9.8 newtons per kilogram giving 490 uh, newtons. That'll be to two sig figs. So um, I can go 4.9 times 10 squared newtons. Okay, uh, B. Now what if the person has an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared down? Um, okay, so when I draw the free body diagram, since the acceleration is down, that means the net force has to be down as well. So my down arrow um, will be the force of gravity still, but now... That's got to be longer than my up arrow this time. So I'm going to draw a pretty short up arrow. Okay, so the, the net force, uh, the magnitude of it, the size of the resultant force, is going to be the size of the longer arrow minus the size of the shorter arrow as they're in opposite directions. So uh, that would be the size of gravity minus the size of the normal force. So I'm, I'm writing this mathematical statement in terms of magnitudes here. That's a really important point. Uh, I have to draw those magnitude bars. Okay, the net force, uh, there's a formula for that based on Newton's second law. It's equal to ma, so I'll replace net force with ma. Uh, I'll replace the force of gravity with mg. And I'm solving for the normal force, so I'll just leave that as the normal force. Yeah, I'll do a bit of rearranging here. So the negative normal force on the right, I'm going to uh, move that over to the left. Uh, so I'm going to have to add it to the left so it becomes positive. Well, it is positive. And that's on the left side of the equation. Um, and the MA, that's currently on the left side, I'm going to swing that over to the right side. So it's positive MA on the left. Uh, I'm going to subtract it uh, from both sides, so it'll end up being MG minus MA. Okay, so that's just some algebra steps there. Um, now my normal force is isolated. I can fill in the values. You may also choose to. This is not necessary, but um, both terms here have a factor of m, so I can common factor it if I wish, which I will. And then now I'll fill in the values. So 50 for the mass, and then uh, 9.8 minus 1.2. So that would be 50 times 8.6. Um, okay, let's see if we can do this. 50 times 8.6, that's like 86 times 5, uh, 430, I think. That'll be to two sig figs, so I'll use scientific notation again. Okay, so the normal force 
is less than the normal force in part A. The weight, well, no, the, yeah, the normal force went down. Um, you, you may feel that if you pay close attention on an elevator, you hit down and like the, that little moment that it starts going down, uh, you may get like some butterflies in your stomach. You'll actually feel like you're a little bit lighter. Uh, that's because the normal force of the floor pressing up on your feet is actually a little bit smaller um, due to that acceleration. So part C, uh, what if, so after the elevator accelerates a bit, uh, now it'll probably start going down the floor is at a constant velocity for a while. Um, so constant velocity, um, hopefully you recognize that at a constant velocity, the forces are balanced. That's Newton's second law. So just like when it was at rest, uh, the forces are balanced as well at constant velocity. So it's actually just going to be the same answer as part A. I'll just copy the same answer. Okay, and part D. Uh, so now the elevator is going to reach uh, the ground floor, so it's got to come to a stop now. So it's got to slow back down, come to a stop, so there's an acceleration there. Uh, the acceleration is up. Let's do this. Uh, in part D, the acceleration is up. So if the acceleration is up, that means what else has to be up? The net force. The acceleration is always in the same direction as the net force. So when I go to draw my free body diagram for part D, I still have gravity equals to mg. Um, but now my net force needs to be up. So my up arrow, I've got to make that a bit longer than the gravity arrow. And uh, this is actually really similar to part B. Um, I'm going to write a statement for the net force again. So the net force, which is up, uh, the magnitude of it is going to be the magnitude of the longer one, which is the normal force this time, minus the magnitude of the shorter one, which is gravity. F net is ma, so I'll make that replacement. Uh, gravity is mg, so I'll make that replacement. And then I'll isolate for normal. So I'm just going to add mg to both sides, or take that minus mg on the right and uh, write it as plus mg on the left. And uh, yeah, I'll common factor that m out again. That's not necessary, but I, I like factoring. And fill in the values. So 50, and then 1.2 plus 9.8. So that's 50 times 11. That would be 550 uh, to two sig figs. So 5.5 times 10 squared newtons. So in part D, the, you'll find that the normal force has a higher value. 550 uh, is higher than 490. So you actually feel a bit heavier um, when the acceleration is up. So you may notice that uh, once you hit the ground floor, elevator comes to a stop and you do feel a little bit more pressure up against your feet uh, during that brief acceleration. And we've just kind of confirmed that with the math here.